uh, you make a particular product, okay? iPhone, made in Malaysia. Bukan pakai iPhone lah. Huh? Satu Malaysia phone. Whatever it is. And the size, huh? it should it be so big or should it be so, or should it be bigger? Yang mana? Okay. Again, to get the answer, experiment. Okay. So, how do you do experiment? So, we need to understand the process of identifying also contaminating factors and how to control them while conducting an experiment. So, bila menjalankan uh, eksperimen, bahayanya ialah ancaman-ancaman yang boleh mencemarkan data eksperimen itu. And the most important of any uh, survey or experiment or focus group is the data. It must be valid. The moment you cemarkan, tak boleh pakai. So, we want to differentiate between internal and external validity and identify the variables that may affect the validity in experimentation. And we want to understand some of the complex experimental design and we want to select the right design for a given research problem. Uh, most important is, apakah masalah yang nak dikaji itu? And based upon that, we decide whether it should be quantitative or qualitative. And if it is quantitative, ah, adakah kita nak jalankan survey atau kita nak jalankan eksperimen so all depend on problem statement so the key concept of uh, eksperimen adalah let's do something and see what happen let us make our one Malaysia phone size ini and then also make yang bagi itu besar and let's see what happen you know do something action taken huh? advertisement pengiklanan huh? So, this color or that color or this phone or that phone, do it first. And then go and do some pilot and do an experiment. Then you see which one is yang significantly lebih berkesan. Experimental design can determine whether variables have a causal relationship. So, nak lihatlah. Adakah size ini meningkatkan penjualan? Atau saiz ini, penjualan yang lebih tinggi. Sebagai permulaan, uh, we lihat pada kelebihan and also kelemahannya reka bentuk eksperimen ini. The advantages determine causal relationship. And that is where many companies that you go to later on, they want to tell you, no, eh, nah, kita telah uh, ada produk yang baru ini. And ada tiga jenisnya. Tapi, because of a limitasi budget, we can only produce one. So out of the three, nak pilih yang mana satu? Experiment. You can also do survey and then you triangulate. Huh? But the main one will be experiment. Determine direction of causality. Huh? So direction. Hmm? The smaller the size of the one Malaysia phone, lebih laku. Example. Meningkatkan penjualan. Determine relative influence of variable. Demonstrate influence of one variable on another. Control over research condition. The big advantage, okay, of experiment. You tell, you believe me, ah, this iPhone company, ah, or television, or smartphone, or tablet, or kereta, anything that they want to sell, they got prototype dulu, and the prototype. They run pilot testing, ujian uh, bintis, and then from there itself they get feedback, feedback dulu. Because you know why? The investment of any corporate company, I mean, to build a product, they don't spend ten dollars, you know. They go to spend tens of millions, you know what I mean? So they need to be very yakin, lah, you know. So they need actually feedback from reka bentuk, for example, like experiment menunjukkan ini memang akan meningkatkan penjualan phone One Malaysia so, reka bentuk eksperimen untuk membuktikan keberkesanan sesuatu tindakan intervensi satu olahan atau rawatan atau mood terhadap sesuatu perubahan fenomenon tertentu 
and especially in the world of business, in the world of corporate, when you go up, the most important at the end of the day they want is, hey, profit tak? Ada untung tak? You know what I mean? Everything at the end of the day comes back to money. Huh? That's why uh, this book, even though it says business research method, all comes from social sciences. Huh? And it boils down whatever we do also to do that. Now, uh, when you do experiment, you need, there will be a very few istilah that you need to know. Huh? So things like independent variable, dependent variable, I think you're used to this already huh? in your first year. Okay? Uh, independent variable, pemboleh ubah, bebas, atau pemboleh ubah, tak bersandar. Huh? Dependent variable, yang bersandar, pemboleh ubah bersandar. Moderating variable, variable, pemboleh ubah, moderator. Juga dipanggil sebagai, pemboleh ubah, bebas. Sambuk sah, they say, moderating variable also called as independent variable. Extraneous variable, lain pun boleh ubah yang mungkin mencemarkan data eksperimen ini. Now, could be very careful of this. Ini adalah ancaman. Huh? It's a real threat. So again, pun boleh ubah tak bersandar is a cost factor and cost is something that makes something use, uh, something else happen. Dependent variable, pembelian bersandar, is the effect factor and an effect is what happened as a result of the cost. So, yang in uh, record bentuk uh, experiment, the most important now, in a company, they want, hey, how to make sure that our product will sell 1 million uh, of this product dalam satu bulan, example. Or, now the sales is just 200,000 per month. Hey, how to meningkat menjadi half a million? Okay, the dependent variable. Huh? So how to make this effect? So we bring in cost. Huh? We bring in the cost. We bring in independent variable. Huh? Moderating variable is a second independent variable. Uh -huh. They call it second independent variable. Huh? Also panggil independent. That is included because it is believed to have a significant contributory effect on the originally stated independent variable, dependent variable relationship. iPhone size against uh, statistic of penjualan. But if you bring in another moderating variable, and that is umur, umur. Huh? So those people who are the young people against the elderly people, those who are above 50 years old, bani dengan the remaja. Huh? That become a moderating variable. So, if you bring in the moderating variable, do you think uh, the people who are, the young people, I know their life is small, but people who are 50 years old, when they go to move their spectacle up, <laughs> so which one do you think will be better for them? Small or big? Probably this. Okay? So, moderating variable can come in to interfere dengan hubung katnya IVDV ini. So, all this must be considered. Okay, and extraneous variable, okay, defined as a factor that might disturb the relationship between dependent and independent variable. You get the punctuation about that factor, factor, consumeran. Okay, so the condition, the condition huh, for cause and effect relationship, katanya, both X and Y should vary. So let's say X is a dependent variable. Huh? X ini adalah pembuli ubah bersandar. So Y change, X patutnya change. Huh? Small phone binding dengan big phone, okay? You expect the sales to go up or down, depending huh? whether among the young people atau the elderly people. X the presumed cost factor should precede Y. Okay. The presumed effect factor. Huh? So, what is the change? Big or small, it will affect. Okay. Huh? 
No other factor should possibly cause the change in the dependent variable. Nothing except X must be influencing Y. So that means uh, make sure that the other extraneous variable come and uh, disturb us. So how to do experimentation? So now I just jump to a real example. A uh, real example of uh, a project. Okay where we did a quantitative uh, study using uh, experimental design. Okay, try to follow one. Huh? This product is called Effects of Phonetic Symbol with Mouth and Face Display in the Learning of Pronunciation. Now, tell me, what is the dependent variable this in? Learning, exactly, learning. Huh? Okay. So we want to have better learning of pronunciation. Huh? Pronunciation. And what are the independent variables? What do you think probably here? Phonetic symbol, like it? Mouth display, face display. Ah, so, this is a real example, you know, okay, of a project, huh? experimental design. Ladies and gentlemen, the School of Education Studies University of Science in Malaysia proudly presents to you e pronouns. Our slogan enabling correct pronunciation across cultures. e pronouns is a multimedia pronunciation learning management system. Now, this project is headed by Professor Fong Sun Fo and a group of faculty members from the School of Education Studies, University of Science in Malaysia located in the state of Penang in West Malaysia. Moving on. Some interesting, innovative e pronounce features. e pronounce is the first ever Malaysian project designed and developed systematically to help correct pronunciation using phonetic symbols. They are both integration of research-based findings in the design of e pronounce the design and development were governed and regulated by four theoretical framework and the ISD model or the instructional system design model. Innovative instructional design for instant real-time recording and playback features are available in APRONAUS and innovative pedagogical instructional design for submission of real-time recording for evaluation. background and promise statement of our study. We found that pronunciation difficulties in the context of non-native English speaking environment are affected by the following problems. Our students come from different cultural backgrounds with their own native languages. And there's a tendency to use the intonation and phonological processes from their mother tongue. And in the formal classroom condition, Learners are reluctant to practice their pronunciation, as a mistake made may cause them to feel embarrassed and intimidated. More from the statement. There is high student-teacher ratio, hence minimal one-to-one -one guidance between teacher and student. Students don't have adequate time to practice pronunciation in formal class condition. And there is the limited human patience of teachers in repeating the pronunciation to slow learners. Moreover, learners do not develop pronunciation competence naturally over time. For example, let us examine these two words, chore and coral. Now, according to Corner, letters are written but sounds are spoken. Hence, we cannot solely rely on written words to pronounce English words. For example, CH for the word chore is pronounced as CH. But the same letter CH for the word coral is pronounced as K. According to the International Phonetic Association, phonetic symbols are one unique symbol for one discrete sound and the symbol is used consistently for all languages. We found that students are aware of the existence of phonetic symbols, but they are unclear of how to use it effectively. 
For example, in traditional dictionary, we find phonetic symbols behind every word. Behind many dev digital devices and online dictionaries, we find that phonetic symbols are used consistently, but students are not using it effectively. The theoretical framework for e pronouns are as listed. Number one, Chomsky's theory on language development in children. Number two, the Baddeley's model. Number three, the cognitive theory of multimedia learning by Mayer. Number four, cognitive load theory by Sweller. The instructional design used in presenting the contents, the text, the graphics, the animation, the narrators, even the type of colors used, etc. in e pronouns are regulated by this theoretical framework. The design and development of e pronouns is governed by the LSC and Trollip instructional system design model, the IST model, uh, right from paperwork until the final product of uh, e pronouns available at e pronouns.usm.my goes through all these stages. There are three phases, the planning phase, the design phase, and the development phase. And in every of these phases, it is being regulated by standards, by quality project management, as well as formative ongoing evaluation. For example, under planning, we define the scores, we identify the learning characteristics, and we establish the contents, and so on. As an illustration, for example, in defining the scope, we limit ourselves to the 44 phonetic symbols that are at the segmental level, the basic level. In terms of identifying learner characteristics, we make use of the 8 to 12 years old students as uh, population and samples in our project. And at this age, they are still very receptive to learning. And in establishing the constraints, for example, for each phoneme, we categorize them as syllable word position, either as the syllable initial as word initial or the syllable initial within the word or they are classified under the syllable final as within the word or at the end of the word. As for vowels as well as for the diphthong, the phonemes are classified under closed or open category. We make use of a maximum of two syllable words for this project of e-pronounce and the primary stress is on the first syllable and they comply with the Malaysian primary five and six syllabus. Next is the design phase where we develop initial content ideas, we conduct task and concept analysis, we did a preliminary program description, then we prepare a prototype and we also created flowcharts, storyboards and prepare the scripts. For example, the initial content ideas, uh, we limit ourselves to the 44 phonetic symbols at the segmental level. And in terms of uh, sample words for consonants, uh, we have 384 for vowels and uh, diphthongs, 160 words, for minimal pairs, 880, and so on. So the total number of words for e pronounced, 1,578, uh, that can be increased uh, in the near future. The flowchart of learning steps in the e-pronouns is shown right from uh, pre-test and they can flow along until the end post-test. And if they are successful in going through the module, then they will be awarded with a certificate. As we zoom in, for example, the learner come in, they can take the pre-test and as you can see, they can do a recording then they can play back to listen to their own pronunciation and if they are satisfied, they can also submit it for evaluation purposes. Next is the overview of 44 sounds of our phonetic symbols where they can click and the sound uh, 
would be would appear for them. Sounds of uh, consonance with associative animation, sample pronunciation with the narrator, and there are minimal pairs activities, enhancements quizzes, and if they do not pass, then they will have to repeat. If they pass, then they continue to the vowels, the diphthongs, to the revisions, and finally, if they complete the whole module successfully, then they'll be awarded the certificate. In terms of uh, development, we initially prepared the text, then we write the program code, we created the graphic, we produced the audio and the video uh, separately, then later on we assembled the pieces together, then we did an alpha test, we make further revision, and going through the cycle until we come up with this uh, valid and reliable e pronounce. So, ePronounce is actually a database management system with customized interface and the programming language that we make use of is jQuery where there's a JavaScript library that simplifies the HTML document transversing, the event handling, the animating and the exact interaction for rapid web development. Ladies and gentlemen, let us take you for a tour to ePronounce. We shall begin with a short video clip emphasizing the importance of correct pronunciation. Daddy, let's watch TV. Okay. Oh no! Watch TV and have a barrel of fun. Watch the TV? Uh-uh. You can't do that. These are the objectives of our project. ePronouns is specially designed and developed for non-native speakers to understand and apply phonetic symbols for correct pronunciation. It is developed to support students and teachers as complementary aids to enable student-centered learning, which is in line with the aspiration of our Malaysian Education Blueprint 2013 to 2025. E-pronouns can be adopted or adapted in non-native English-speaking countries such as Thailand, Myanmar, Indonesia, China, Taiwan, and the list goes on. On behalf of the School of Educational Studies, University Science Malaysia, we would like to share free quality service with all of you. Before starting to use e-pronouns, you are advised to click here. You will then see the flow chart which illustrates the effective learning steps. You will then be enlightened with the unique features of e-pronouns. Creative associative animations to help visualize sounds. All-inclusive pronunciations from words to syllabus. Laptop. Lab top interactive record and play buttons. I shall now record my pronunciation using this red button. Click the red button, and I need to allow Adobe Flash setting here. And now I click on the red button again for recording. Laptop. Laptop. Stop it. And I like to play by clicking on this button. Laptop. Laptop. Recordable features for online evaluation. In the pre-test list, I will select Coral. 
Now I'd like to record my pronunciation by clicking on the recording button. I need to click allow the Adobe Flash setting. Now I will click on the red button again. I like to pronounce coral. Coral. I click stop button. I'm going to click on play. I like to pronounce coral. Coral. Okay. And if I'm not happy with this pronunciation, if I'm not happy with this pronunciation, then I can re-record. Click again. Coral. Stop it. And play again. Coral. Stop it. And if I'm happy with this recording, then I just click submit. And this is submitted to the ePronounce database for the teachers and evaluators to evaluate the pronunciation. Minimal pairs to compare and contrast sounds. Dare, bear. They pay. Hard. Harm. Dip, sip. Bid, bit. Availability and accessibility 24 7. Full human face narrator. Instant feedback quizzes. Dark Say Zoom Depot Shelley Zip Zap Fail Pale Hole Heel Neat Knit Knit Shun Sun Certificate of Completion with Distinguished Signature. Ladies and gentlemen, let me continue by sharing some qualitative and quantitative findings on our ePronounce project. From the qualitative uh, feedback I've received from students and teachers, where there were 320 students involved and 11 teachers. Now, student X. Using ePronounce to learn correct pronunciation is easy and fun. According to Student Y, I really love the recording and playback button, allowing me to listen to my own pronunciation. And Student Y responded, The animation helped me a lot to differentiate the sounds or consonants easily. According to Teacher X, the instant feedback of quizzes motivates my students to move on. 
and teach you why, the narrator of a pronounce is able to repeat the pronunciation effortlessly with consistent tone and pronunciation. For the quantitative experiment, we present, we prepared a uh, e pronounce in three different modes. Uh, mode number one is called the TSP mode, where there is only the text and the sound and the phonetic symbols. While the TSPM uh, mode will have the text, the sound, phonetic symbols, and the narrator's mouth movement. While the TSPF will have the text, sound, phonetic symbols, plus the narrator's full face. So among the 320 students, they were randomly uh, distributed in three different groups. So each student will interact with only any one of the three modes. The Pratt Acoustic Analysis software was used for word segmentation. The word that were pronounced were recorded, uh, they were submitted into the database and we used this particular software to do word segmentation. After that, the words are transcribed into this transcription uh, sheet for further analysis. And later on, they were trans uh, translated into this particular rubric for final evaluation and grading. Among the results that we obtained, uh, in this case, the process cost by the presentation mode, the process cost is the dependent variable uh, showing the achievement of the students with regard to correct pronunciation and the presentation mode referring to the three modes that we presented just now. So we can see that there is a significant difference among students using the three different modes of e pronouns. And from the estimated marginal means by presentation mode, we can see that the students in the group using the full face of the narrator uh, achieve significantly better results. So apparently, the one with the full face uh, narrator is more effective in helping students pronounce correctly. In the postcast course by visualization level and presentation uh, mode, we also make use of uh, students, we did measure their visualization level, whether they were low or high, as the moderate uh, variable. Okay? And we found that there is significant difference among the low and high visualization level students using the three different modes of e pronounce. From the estimated uh, marginal means by visualization level and presentation mode, we can see that the among the low visualization level students, the one that performs significantly better are those using the full face narrator mode. And among the high visualization level students, we find that students using the narrator full face mode uh, achieve significantly better results. In the process caused by language anxiety level and presentation mode, so one more moderating variable that we use in our experiment, the language anxiety levels so we find that there are no significant interaction effect between language anxiety levels and presentation modes of e pronounce. Now, seemingly, ladies and gentlemen, the e pronounce project is able to bring students to the medium anxiety level and hence optimizing learning. And in this case, optimizing uh, learning of correct, correct pronunciation.